Hi there. As a Marxist-Leninist, I often find myself critical of anarchism on a historical and dialectical basis. This, however, does not mean that I have to be, you know, hostile or vitriolic towards anarchists. I consider most anarchists to be an ally of mine in the fight against capitalism, imperialism, colonialism, fascism, and all of the other conditions of capitalism on a global scale. That being said, I'm still critical of anarchism on a historical and ideological basis. So, today we're going to be looking at perhaps one of the worst and also the most obscure failures in the history of anarchism, the Stranza Commune. The Stranza Commune was the result of a militant struggle carried out by the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization in Bulgaria in the early 20th century. An agent of militant opposition against the Ottoman Empire, the IMRO was primarily active in the Thrace region of the Adrianopol Vilayet, a province governed by the Ottomans. Led by the anarchist Mihal Gerzikov, the IMRO utilized their struggle during the Elinden Uprising of 1903 to establish a liberated zone in the Bulgarian Stranza Mountains. After the armed guerrilla struggle of the IMRO's 2,000 militiamen against a 10,000 troop faction of the Ottoman Empire, the aforementioned liberated zone was established and began operating under the banner of anarcho-communism. The establishing of the Stranza Commune and the IMRO's militant struggle against the Ottomans should be admired for their revolutionary efforts. However, these efforts proved to be flawed both in execution and maintenance. This attempt at an anarcho-communist society is perhaps the shortest lasting effort to uphold a revolutionary socialist government. For comparison's sake, the Paris Commune lasted a little over two months before reactionary forces came after them. The Stranza Commune, however, barely lasted a month. It didn't even last a full month before the Ottomans came and just completely demolished them. Lasting from August 18th to September 8th in 1903, the Stranza Commune only held a modicum of power for approximately three weeks. Why exactly did this attempt at a socialist, anarcho-communist society last hardly even a month? According to the sources that I've gathered, and bear in mind, there aren't a lot of easily accessible academic sources regarding the Stranza Commune, at least based on my research, the three weeks that this attempt at anarcho-communism lasted can be characterized as a constant celebration. Establishing an alternative to a colonialist empire is definitely something to be admired and celebrated, but the efforts in Stranza required a lot more attention to their material conditions. The sheer territorial size of the commune posed a challenge in defending their revolution. Uh, this map that I'm about to show you, it shows that the commune was effectively surrounded by Ottoman forces and needed to establish a legitimate means of protecting and strengthening their revolution. Though many of the men in the commune trained as guerrilla fighters, and this was all well before the influence of Lenin's state and revolution, so the study of vanguardism really was not as in-depth as it could have been, the lack of attention to material conditions and sufficient armed struggle ultimately played into the downfall of the Stranza Commune. The Stranza Commune additionally did engage in some reactionary practices in the short time that it stood. As mentioned before, the men that lived and worked in the Commune served as the guerrilla forces, designed to defend against the Ottoman forces or any other reactionary encroachments. What did the women do? Women in the commune primarily took place in the workforce, working mainly in the agricultural field. While women maintaining the workforce definitely did have its benefits, such as reflecting the collective application of agriculture, the enfranchisement of women, and the overall betterment of the commune with the uh, expansion of food supply, there still maintained reactionary elements in this application of women's enfranchisement in attempting to build socialism. We're still seeing a gender division of labor and society in the Stranza attempt at anarcho-communism. Women making up the entirety of the workforce, the cultivation of food, and other similar practices reflects a form of subjugation of women within the commune, with their focus on agricultural development encompassing a form of servitude to the men of the commune. In essence, the women were made responsible for taking care of and serving the men in their guerrilla efforts. With men making up most of, if not the entirety, of the armed guerrilla forces, we also see a form of paternalistic protection, with the men of the commune effectively reinforcing reactionary gender roles, serving as a paternal overseer and protector of the non-guerrilla women. 
This gender division of the strands of commune, while nowhere near as extreme as in the United States or Tsarist Russia, displays a reactionary and ultimately utopian foundation in this attempt at socialism. Had the guerrillas not exclusively been men, or the agricultural workers all exclusively being women, this reactionary character would likely have either been eradicated or been nowhere near as prominent. This utopianism, along with the insufficient defense forces of the guerrillas, ultimately contributed to the eventual fall of the commune to the Ottoman forces. After three weeks of celebration and socialist experimentation, the Ottoman Empire decimated the Stranza Commune in very brutal fashion. The Stranza Commune, or the Stranza Republic if some have referred to it, holds admirable qualities in their fight against a colonialist empire and to establish a society for the benefit of all people, characterized by the cooperation between Bulgarian and Greek people in the commune's proceedings. These admirable aspects, however, do not outweigh the weaknesses and the flaws exhibited by the commune. The incredibly short duration of the commune's lifespan, the reactionary gendered divisions of the strands of society, and the inability to properly defend the prospective socialist government exemplifies what is, at least in my opinion, the most grandiose example of anarchism's historical failure. Again, just to clarify, I am not against working with anarchists in the struggle against capitalism, imperialism, racism, sexism, fascism, and all of the other reactionary forces that plague so much of the world. It's just important to note that, historically speaking, anarchism in practice has not yielded favorable results and has more often than not fallen to reactionary, imperialist forces before achieving any actual great feats of socialism. Both in historical and theoretical regards, Marxism-Leninism has been maintained as the only form of revolutionary, scientific socialism that can properly counter the hegemony of capitalism and truly liberate the working class and all other oppressed masses. And that will do it for this video. If anyone happens to have any more information on the Stranza Commune or anything else that's related to it, I would greatly appreciate any links, books, videos, anything else on the subject that you might be able to show me. And just a reminder that if you would like to support me and this channel, you can buy me a coffee through a one-time donation for as little as $3, or you can do a monthly or yearly uh, membership. A monthly membership is $5 a month, and a yearly membership is $50 for a full year of perks. If you choose to go with either of the membership packages, there are perks such as having your name listed in the description of my videos, or having a list of recommended readings sent to you every month. If you'd like to help support me and my channel in any of those ways, the link to buy me a coffee will be in the description. My name is Jimmy, thank you for watching.